each other, two opposites. But as we see over and over again, what is sold to us as polar opposites are always on the same side. That's the way our government, the way the CIA operates things. And so, as you pointed out, Israel and uh, Saudi Arabia, the Arabs are, are working uh, to try to take out Iran and, and other groups. And they're working against the best interests of the United States. But, of course, Saudi Arabia has the leverage over us of the petrodollar. That's the way that uh, Nixon and Kissinger set all this up. Once they took us off the gold standard after uh, Bretton Woods, then they said, OK, our new leverage is going to be the petrodollar. We're going to work with the Saudis and the Saudis are joined at the hip with the CIA. And I think it's very important for people to understand we've had situations with the Iranians. They, they want to portray them in the mainstream media as being these radical, crazy people. And yet we shot down a civilian airliner of Iran and they didn't do anything about it. What would we have done if it had been reversed? Of course, we know exactly what would have happened. Many people don't understand what's going on in Iran. They don't understand the history that we had prior to the Ayatollah Khomeini coming to power as a reaction to the Shah of Iran that we put in there. And, of course, you know, we overthrew their government under Mossadegh, or the uh, CIA coup. They had an incredibly repressive regime. Uh, Wayne, when I was in college, there were a lot of Iranian students and the uh, engineering curriculum that were there. They were protesting with uh, masks over their face because they were concerned about repercussions at home with the Savak. And I said, well, what's, that, what's that about? And they were telling me about what the Savak, who was trained by the CIA, what they were doing at home. And it's like... I can't believe that I, at that point in time, that was kind of my awakening as to how repressive and brutal our government can be with these uh, coups and the and governments that they institute there. So people, Americans have no understanding of what happened in Iran prior to the takeover of the American embassy. They don't have a historical context. That's correct. And uh, I mean, you look at the history of U.S. Middle East policy and they talk about blowback, and we certainly saw the blowback in so many respects. Uh, the, the Supporting the Mujahideen against the Soviet Union in Afghanistan, when in fact that was the breeding ground where, uh, where Osama bin Laden and his cohorts became so powerful. Uh, th there was never any issue between them and the Saudis because uh, the Saudis uh, would pay them money so they would never attack inside the kingdom. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and, and we've been just led astray by all these uh, bought and paid for politicians and the media. The media has been absolutely uh, uh, disgusting on this. And, and now we see the media, instead of asking these candidates during these debates legitimate questions, we see basically what was predicted by the, uh, the 1970s movie Network. Uh, the, the presidential campaign has been turned into a reality TV show where you don't have political people behind uh, the scenes, at, uh, you know, coming up with the questions. you got Hollywood directors saying, get the camera on this one, get the yeah. camera on that one. And it's just a big Hollywood production. Uh, it's, it's a complete waste of time. Uh, I, I wouldn't even watch that debate because, um, you know, if I want to see that, I'll go back and watch rewatch the movie network which uh was way ahead of its time <laughs> you know it was interesting one of the one of the stories that came out that i thought was pretty funny wayne was uh bernie sanders they had some of the tweets that he was putting out trolling the republicans while this was going on and i i, I strongly disagree with bernie sanders i'm not supporting bernie sanders as a presidential candidate but what he had to say about the gop debate was spot on this is what he had to say Wayne. he said war 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 when do we get to the other major priority? Tax breaks for billionaires. <laughs> then he said, Trump, what a pleasant, humble person. Can't stop saying kind and, and uh, generous things about his fellow Republicans. And he says, uh, finally, he says, okay, let's vote for Reagan. He sounds better than any of these other guys. I mean, that's basically it. Personal invectives, mostly from Donald Trump. And that's what Jake Tapper was doing. He said, he'd come to people and say, well, you know, Donald Trump said this about you. What, what do you think about that? I mean, it's like some kind of a silly high school uh, instigator, you know, trying to uh, pit one person against the other. But then the rest of it was Ronald Reagan and let's go to war with the rest of the world. Right. And it's no different than what Fox did in the last debate. They're both seeing huge ratings as a result of these debates. But yeah. people are not being educated. What should happen right. is the debate should go back to the League of Women Voters. It should go back into a regular political debate format, uh, uh, standard debate rules should apply. Uh, if they have a problem with that, go back and look at the Nixon-Kennedy debate, what was moderated by Howard K. Smith. That can be done again. It isn't going to get ratings. 
It's not going to entertain people, but it's going to maybe start educating people about uh, the choices they have in the next election because people right now are being entertained and not educated. And 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 I, I believe that in the in the older debates uh, from years gone past, the networks ate the advertising time. They they actually ran a debate without uh, a, a commercial breaks because they thought it was uh, in the public interest to educate the voting public. That's all been lost with this crazy uh, Hollywood, uh, because you got to realize both Fox News and CNN are not owned by news companies. They're owned by uh, entertainment uh, conglomerates. Oh, yeah, that's news right. Yeah. And uh, Time Four or five Wars, of them now. Time yeah. Warner. Yeah, exactly. Well, it was it was reported, and they were even admitting it before that what they wanted were was conflict, so they could get some sound bites, so they could get an audience. It is a reality TV show. I call it Celebrity Big Brother. Uh, every four years, we get to elect another Big Brother, and uh, this is just just like that structure where they take one guy goes out every couple of weeks. You know, we've already had uh, uh, Rick Perry get voted out of Celebrity Big Brother, <laughs> so now we right. will see this this gradual attrition, and this can go on quite some time. With this large a field, uh, they can they can be taking them out uh, one at a time. The the one thing, the only thing that really changed between the two bit the de between the two debates, the first one at Fox and the second one at CNN, was that instead of the uh, anchor uh, putting themselves up there and and going head to head with uh, Donald Trump, what they tried to do was mix up Donald Trump with the other other candidates instead of like like uh, Megyn Kelly. Uh, aimed her lip gloss at uh, Donald Trump and said, you don't like women, do you? You know, start a fight, personal fight with him. But that's essentially what's happening. It is a reality show. It's one of the reasons why Donald Trump is doing so well. He's done reality shows for a very long time, he, been very successful at it. He knows show. exactly how to do that. Yes, right. And the other thing they're doing, they're taking they're taking uh, candidates who do the earlier, you know, the, uh, the kiddie debate and, 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 and subjectively putting them into the, the, uh, the adult debate. I'm yes. very... And, and yes. what's, the, what's the ground rules for that? They put Carly Fiorina up there. We're out of time. Thank you so much. And as we're ending up talking about the uh, debate, I want to play you this clip from the debate because although there's a lot of nonsense from the debate, I think there is still important things that we can glean from it. Again, the discussion about uh, vaccines, their safety, their efficacy, and most importantly, informed consent and your freedom. Those are all topics that got touched on. Let's hear that clip from the debate. Hello. Hey, let's go to what they're saying right now because Donald Trump is making an epic statement about the connection of autism and vaccines. And I've seen it. And I had my children taken care of over a long period of time, over a two or three year period of time. Same exact amount. But you take this little beautiful baby and you pump. I mean, it looks just like it's meant for a horse, not for a child. And we've had so many instances, people that work for me just the other day, two years old, two and a half years old, a child, a beautiful child, went to have the vaccine and came back and a week later got a tremendous fever, got very, very sick. This is now great. He's, he's doing a great job. I only say thank you, Donald. it's not, I'm in favor of vaccines. I gotta say thank over you a for longer this. period of time, yep. same amount. Excellent. Thank you. Just in in little and sections. that's what I said Dr. earlier. Carter, I agree Carter. on that. I think Excellent. You're going to have, Excellent. I think you're going to see a big impact on autism. Doctor Carter, yeah. you're going to hear Ben Carson jump in. Nailed it. Pro Good job. Vaccine. He didn't backtrack. I like that. That's right. He's an okay doctor. <laughs> oh yeah. Trust me because I'm a doctor. Come on. I don't want to hear that. Yeah. Only I don't want to hear that. I can read the stuff myself, Doctor Ben Carson. Right. Read the Constitution, jerk. If you're going to run for president. <laughs> There's no autism associated with vaccinations, Whoa. but it is uh, true that documented proof by our paid-off no. scientists, of time. And paid off by of big pharma. Now recognize that, and I think are cutting down on the number and the proximity in which those are done. And, and that's, I think all, that's, I'm saying, that's all I'm saying, Jake. That's all I'm saying. Well, Paul, now they're like saying autism is caused by hey, let's understand. They one after the other. Yeah, let's understand. We have such a thing called informed consent, unless we're their slaves one too. One of the greatest, <laughs> one of the mm -hmm. greatest medical discoveries of all time were, were the vaccines, particularly for smallpox. And if you want to read a story, it's called the Speckled Monster. It's an amazing story. It was all done voluntarily, but people came in by the droves. George Washington wouldn't let his wife visit until she got vaccinated. 
vaccinated. So I'm all for vaccines, but I'm also for freedom. I'm also a little concerned about how they're bunched up. My kids had all of their vaccines, and even if the science doesn't say bunching them up's a problem, I ought to have the right to spread my vaccines out a little bit at the very least. That's right. All right. Informed thank you. consent. Yeah, coming up, right. Jake. Yeah. I'm yeah, sorry, Governor right. Ackerley, please. That's the point. You know I what? I disagree with Rand Paul on vaccines, but he nailed it because as a president, what his responsibility is, is not to decide, even if he is a doctor, his responsibility is not to decide what's the best for us and make us do it. Right. It's his responsibility to make sure he maintains our freedom to make that decision. It's my job as a, as a person to decide if I want to have a beer, if I decide if I want to go smoke pot, if I want to take a vaccination. It's up to me to decide what goes in my body. That's right. Not some president, not some dictator who thinks they can tell me what I can or can't do. That's right. It should be up to me. That's the freedom. That's what America's supposed to be about. And just like Carson admitted, he's like, yeah, maybe we should space them out a little bit more. But what about all the people who took them before that who are suffering the ill effects of having these things bang, 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 come through uh, right. in such a tight. And you're not gonna hear all these people who are now singing the praises of vaccines, even Rand Paul and Huckabee, you're not gonna hear them talking about when they talk about polio, polio, polio. You're not gonna hear them talking about SV40, simian virus number 40, which was put into the vaccines, adulterating the vaccines, exactly causing, and they admitted this, causing cancer. They still continue to use it even after they knew they'd contaminated the vaccines with it. Again, that was live coverage of uh, our debate, our, our coverage of the live debate as part of the money bomb that was, uh, I was there with Jakari Jackson, Leanne McAdoo, and Joe Biggs were commenting on the debate as it happened. Again, that was SV40 that they put into the polio vaccine that everybody wants to use as the poster child. It's our decision. The science is not settled because the vaccines are not settled. They're constantly changing them. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Welcome back to the Alex Jones Show. I'm David Knight, your host today. We're going to be Playing some more clips from the live debate coverage that we had as part of the money bomb. Uh, that was the GOP debate with uh, CNN. Before we get to that, we're going to play those in the next segment. Before we get to that, there's some breaking news uh, that came out today. We had uh, information about Hillary's State Department lawyer. We find out that there are some emails where they are sending an email saying, destroy these classified Benghazi emails. This is reported by WND. They say another jolting disclosure in the Hillary Clinton email scandal. The State Department asked her lawyer to destroy all electronic copies of an email with classified information on the Benghazi terrorist attack. They say Clinton attorney David Kendall refused the request from Under Secretary of State for the management, for management rather, Patrick F. Kennedy, Citing requests by Congress and other investigators to preserve her records. In other words, she said, they said, we've had Congress and investigators ask us not to destroy this, but you and the State Department are asking us to destroy these Benghazi emails. How about that? That's one of the reasons why her popularity is plummeting. Of course, there's been no debates on the Democrat side. Uh, Hillary Clinton has been working with her allies in the Democrat uh, Party hierarchy to make sure that that doesn't happen. Meanwhile, uh, Joe Biden is Biden his time. I guess that's what we got to call him. He's Biden his time. He's going to wait, I think, until for his formal announcement until just before the first caucuses and primaries. He'll be the fresh new replacement. We've seen Hillary Clinton lose a massive purge of 20 percent of her popularity. Where did that go? Did it go to Bernie Sanders? No, it went to Joe Biden, who hasn't even announced. Now we have this article that uh, came out uh, yesterday uh, off of the Drudge Report. National Review reports that uh, Josh Alcorn, who joined the draft Biden Super PAC, uh, MSNBC, MSNBC headlined the story, uh, draft Biden just got real. Well, he was talking on a uh, train, on an Amtrak train from New York to Wilmington. He was talking very, very loudly and uh, everyone could, uh, no one could avoid hearing him in the cafe car. And what he said was, I am a hundred percent that Joe is in. But of course, I think he's going to be crafty. I think he's going to uh, Joe Biden his time. And he is going to wait until just before uh, the primaries to announce that. And I quite frankly think that there is a movement within the Democrat Party to get rid of Hillary Clinton. I think she's got some pretty sharp elbows. I think they are essentially criminals with a lot uh, on, on other people, and many people would like to see them out of the way. I think uh, Joe Biden also has a lot of connections within the Democrat Party, but I don't think they're the kind of 
blackmailing connections that Hillary Clinton and Bill Clinton are likely to have. Now, one of the interesting things that came up with this was Hillary Clinton said she can't name a single top accomplishment. She was asked directly by Wolf Blitzer uh, in her first live interview of the campaign. So there hasn't been any, any debates at all on the Democrat side. There hasn't even been a live interview of Hillary. Remember how 